Welcome, welcome. It's November. Can you believe that? It's November. It is November. Almost December. Almost December. It's scary, huh? Just blew Here you go, darling. It did. Goodbye. All right. So yeah. So what are we grateful for? And who's got something good to share? Something fun. We love this energy. Y'all people online, y'all wish I could be here. Oh, Poppy, what's up? About time. <laughs> I called you out on live camera. <laughs> oh no, Norman just ran off with the mic. Tell us something good, what y'all got? We had some people do some great things, very creative things with um, with our trunk or treat. How many of y'all in here participated in the trunk or treat? Uh, what'd y'all think about it? It was awesome. I had a lot of fun. Yeah, a lot of fun. I'm glad some people showed up. <laughs> right. It was, we'll, 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 I could not believe how fast it, it was just so many people. We had maybe like 10 bags of candy and in 30 minutes, we were out of candy. We we really didn't. Oh, trust me, I know. Absolutely. I went. I went on a candy run within forty five minutes of of trunk or treat starting, and I spent eleven $1 hundred and fifty dollars on candy. Oh, I saved it because we gave some back that was left over, but yeah. But that's that's how. So be prepared next year. We'll have those. Absolutely. Year, Get creative. Right? I think this team meeting we're announcing, what is that? We will be. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, what's up, Norman? Hey, what's up, this Terrence McPeters? Oh, Shorty the Pimp, Shorty the Pimp showed up at Halloween. He was slinging, he was, it's on, it's on. he was slinging candy everywhere. Shorty the Pimp showed up. He was, he was clean. <laughs> but he wasn't clean as Michael Jackson and with uh, Brandon. Brandon was the cleanest with, for Michael Jackson, y'all. But it was, we had fun. Awesome. <laughs> anything else you guys that was a lot good of fun. news any business did anybody get any leads from that oh tasha did okay tasha all oh, of oh, the solid oh look, look, all these guys are coming all right come on miss parker miss parker you see you a little slower today is it one, one step slower my uh photo booth my photo booth is my lead gen machine so i have about 310 contacts with telephone numbers that i'm Wow. Uh, today and the fifth one I called today. They're looking to buy. Awesome. So utilizing what she has, right? This is kind of what she has, right? Her photo booth. She got 300 contacts in there and reached out today. And I could hear you actually. <laughs> As your neighbor and made some phone calls. And before she got, I don't remember how many you said in, but she got five leads already. Yep, Pretty good. Awesome. Pretty good. Now you got to think how you can what you can do to um, generate leads from that event yourselves. All right. Good deal. Anybody else going once, going twice? Miss Dave, anything good to share? All right. Yeah, Look at that. Roll up. Awesome. 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 All right. Let's go. Oh. We're getting a message okay, saying no sound. More things than that. Yes. Okay. Hang on. Hang on. Do you need a mic? Do you need a mic? Do you need a mic? That's what I. Do you need a mic? I just like to announce that we have an agent who came back to us, and she's here today. Woo! That's what I kept nodding at. <laughs> Yes, yes. Right? like we're bold. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Love, love, love Elaine Hatton. If you guys don't, I, I know like this I, for Melanie. Happy to That's have her back. Thing for <laughs> happy, happy to have her back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As y'all see, we love her. So yes, if yes, you haven't had an so. opportunity to meet her, make sure you stop by there and meet her and introduce yourself and. I'm sure she'll receive y'all nicely. But only please limit your time because you could probably just let her keep talking because it's very pleasant to listen really? to her. <laughs> it's true. So don't waste too Absolutely. much of her time. Elaine, welcome home, darling. I love her. Awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, let's roll. All right, upcoming events. They just keep rolling. 
All right, this is goal setting week with Andy, right? So we had a great turnout last night for the evening session of, of uh, Business Planning Clinic. Uh, she is hosting goal settings tomorrow from 1.30 to 3.30 right here in the training room and in the training room only, all right? Uh, followed by on Friday, she's doing the full business planning clinic, all right, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Lunch will be provided, okay? Um, reminder, next, every team meeting is a special team meeting, but next week is an extra special team meeting. We will be honoring our veterans, and it is our uh, veteran-themed team meeting next Wednesday, led by Chad, okay? And as if you can you see, we've already started. you are a veteran and you haven't self-identified yourself, just get with someone on the leadership team so we can make sure you're recognized at that event as well. Just let us know. If you think we've missed you, let us know as well. All right. Okay, uh, November 16th is our Thanksgiving potluck. We'll get more into that. And then of course, dun, 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 we time's the back bar. around the room. Our uh, Keller Williams Southwest annual holiday party is December 2nd or gala as we're gala. calling it this year. It we're a little fancy this year. Yes. Yep. yes. It's coming in just a second. Well, good question. Um, I, I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a sign up. That way we can keep track. Um, but we'll, we'll get you we'll get you some more info on that. So let's break it down a little bit. Uh, goal settings again tomorrow from 1.30 to 3.30 with Andy. Uh, please try to make it specially if you've never done one before, okay? And then followed by the full business planning clinic on Friday from 9 to 3, lunch will be provided and you will be walking out with your business plan for 2023. Yes, Just friend. to let y'all know, if you have not had an opportunity to sit with our broker, Andy, as she helps you with your business plan, this is something you don't want to miss. She breaks it down very eloquently and can definitely help move your business forward. Quick question. Since lunch is provided, is there a sign up sheet? Really? They're worried about lunch? No, no. I was asking because there's, there's spots limited. He wants to make sure he signs up. We actually have yeah. not done a sign up sheet. Okay. 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 We're, we're planning on a certain group being in here. And, yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, I forgot. I already forgot. All right. Yeah, because we don't. <laughs> I still forgot, Norman. All right. So, uh, as we mentioned, aforementioned earlier, that trunk or treat was an absolute success. We're estimating that over a thousand showed up. So that breaks our record for sure. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of fun, a great turnout. The weather held up. The thank you patent title for having the Astros game on mm -hmm. and for serving beer, even though we were not sure if we were supposed to. Um, yeah, but uh, yes, again, pleasant, amazing turnout. So be prepared next year for even a larger crowd. All right, without further ado, we're already ready to announce our Winner. winners. All right, so first place, congratulations. It goes to Debbie Zapata, Alicia Arroyo, and Anai Paez for the Little Red Riding Hood setup. All right, that was cute, it was right? awesome. Yes, oh, absolutely. Okay, good. Awesome, awesome. And then second place, congratulations, Liz Guevara Backman always does an amazing job. And she did a, a, a great, um, great, great whole setup there. We should make her excluded from one. I know, right? She, she, she was chairman pushing of the board. Surprised. I know, right? And then again, congratulations to third place Brandon and Cass uh, for their whole Michael Jackson setup. It was uh, it was pretty nice with the whole graveyards and everything. Um, we appreciate you also cleaning up the Classic. graveyard before you left. Yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah that was that was a, that was big props. So congratulations to all the winners. Uh, you, you're going to be getting your prizes. It was a lot of fun. Looking forward to next year. Yeah. Good absolutely. deal. All right. Um, reminder. Don't say we didn't remind you. Daylight savings time is actually around the corner again. All right, it's this weekend. So make sure you're setting those clocks accordingly. Okay, Sunday early morning, Saturday night, Sunday early morning. And then we have some cool little reminders like check your smoke detectors and- You, you know, you can use this as a way to reach out into your sphere. And so another reason to push it out. There are some, um, I guess, marketing material inside of command that you could just push out as well. And you can set it, you know, set that timer for that. Yep. Good deal. All right. Uh, reminder again uh, about team meeting next week, veterans focused team meeting. Again, the uh, potluck on November 16th, we, it will be during this team meeting time. We will have a shorter condensed gratitude team meeting followed by our Thanksgiving potluck. Uh, I'm sure we're going to get some sign up things go sheets going out and uh, 
please, please bring, bring what you bring like your food, share. bring your cultural food as well. It's typically lines all the way up through that hall, all, all the, the way, way this way yeah. and further down this way. So we always have a lot of food and a lot of things to be thankful for. So come spend some time with your KWSW family members. Absolutely. All right. And then again, the holiday party, the holiday gala, which is taking place December 2nd. Uh, the the uh, RSVPs have already started going out. They're posted in the Facebook group. Uh, it was attached to an email uh, day before uh, yesterday as well on Monday. And another one with just this on it will go out today. But please RSVP if you're uh, interested in attending. Uh, it is going to take place at Sweetwater Country Club. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's free to the agents yes, who are here. That's where I was going. Right. But um, your spouse or a any guest, guess, any plus one is uh, is forty dollars. Okay, okay. This year. Come dressed and fresh. I'm gonna mm -hmm. have my legs out. No, I'm just oh, good. <laughs> That's all I got. That's all I got. <laughs> all right. Don't tell Tam. All right. Except that it's recorded. All right. Uh, just a reminder again, it's the third um, Bay Rep class uh, in their little series the, today, right after team meeting at one o'clock. It'll take place right here in the training room. And uh, we are uh, hosting it for them. And again, the today's topic is VA Loans 101. Okay, so if you're interested in learning more about the basics of VA loans, it'll take place right here in the training room, one o'clock after team meeting today. Cool. All right. A few more cool educational bits coming up. This is a great social media and referral generation class that we're bringing to the office. It's an outside party. Uh, it's, it's gotten really popular amongst the Keller Williams Market Centers, and I've heard it's a great class. So it's going to take place Thursday, November 10th at 10 a.m. right here in the training room. Uh, that information, more information. I, know, I understand that this is a little small for you guys to read, but it'll be posted in the Facebook group and probably emailed out as well. Okay, but uh, if you want to know more about how to uh, do marketing at a high level on social media and uh, build a referral network, uh, join join in on this class. So. It's not only geared to newer agents, it's also geared mm -hmm. to your top producing agents because this program was created by top producing agents. Mm -hmm. uh, so if this is an, a, an area you want to focus on, I encourage everybody to because this is the way of the world right now. Social media is a way to um, increase your leads, increase mm -hmm. your listing and leverage. Yep. Um, From what I know, it's a very powerful class. The last five minutes or so <laughs> maybe a little spiel about uh, them doing it for you. Uh, yet, but the content for the first 55 minutes or so, you can just implement it to your business, okay? So just, I highly recommend you taking that. All right, next, uh, the day after on November 11th, we have a two hour CE class coming in and the topic is uh, residential structural inspections. So if you need some CE hours or just wanna know more about structural inspections provided by Sunbelt Inspections, they will be here uh, in the training room November 11th at 1.30, okay? All right, and Marty Miller, our Regional Director of Technology is coming back to teach another class. Uh, this time it's gonna be about how to create low-cost Facebook leads with KW Command. How many of y'all participated in his last one? Was it valuable? Amazing, right? You walked yeah. away with a lot of content that you could deliver instantly. So right. if you have let's, it- Let's flip that around a little bit. How many were unable to attend that day? Cause I know it was a, it was a Friday, it was a half day for schools. Um, I know there's more than that, that just are just not raising their hands. I've already talked to them about actually bringing that class back in December. Okay. And we'll make it like early December. So it's not during the holidays. Uh, so if you didn't miss out the first time, look out for that. We'll start announcing that, but he'll, he'll bring that digital farming class back. Okay. So we will make sure it's back, but this one is about how to create <laughs> low cost Facebook leads, November 17th, one o'clock right here in the training room. Okay. All right. Oh, nothing today, right? No, I got some stuff. <laughs> trying to push me off here. All right, it's it's been a while since I did a BBL, you guys. BBL. Time for your BBL. Bang. No. Oh, sorry. It's get your butts up and lift your butts up and get to work. Okay. Um, business branding lesson here. So <clears throat> we want you to reimagine yourself with repost. Of course, this is more geared towards TikTok and um, Instagram, but if you're utilizing these. Uh, social media, uh, I guess, mediums, then one of the things to help build your engagement is with repost themselves. Specifically, what we want to focus on is you want to realize your rate of success, okay? Your business, it's impossible for you to work efficiently without analyzing your results. So what results are you kind of looking at? You're looking for tracking your kind of likes, your comments, your videos, uh, the video views, the post views, the story views, and the profile reach. And if you have a specific type of account, the creator account, the professional account, 
You can also look at other people's posts and what views they're getting, the number of views they're getting. So you can see if this is something you want to utilize as well. Use these numbers to determine your engagement rate, right? This is how people are actually interacting with your page and your posts or your feeds. And then your engagement rate will definitely vary, vary based on the number of followers you have. The more followers you have, the more, the higher your potential engagement rate. That's why you're constantly adding. When we had Elio in here, he says he adds 20 contacts per day, right? 20 followers per day. So you, and then they in turn will then start following you. So you want to keep growing your base. So <clears throat> repost to boost engagement. You see this, Keller Williams Southwest, our Instagram feed, which AKA means Greg, right? <laughs> he constantly is reposting some of your feeds. You can turn around and repost some of our feeds or other people that you're following to help boost your engagement rate. So you want to do this, do this for top performing, um, top performing people that you're following or accounts that you're following. But don't forget yourself. Every six months or so, reanalyze your posts and the top performing posts that you have, and then test it out. Repost your own posts that had those thousand views or 2000 views, okay? And see if it can still draw traffic to you, especially when it's content that's educational. That's my BBL moment. Cool, thank you. I lift your booty and get to work. <laughs> like get a butt lift is what you're saying? Lift your booty and get to work. All right. Oh, it's my turn. It's your turn. All right. All right. So. You know, today's team meeting, I wanted to make sure I focused around, we've been, you know, taking different sects of lead generation. I did say sects of lead generation, um, yeah. you know, with, <laughs> uh, with the, with the uh, you know, the shifting of the market and we need to double down on lead generation. So we want to make sure we're focusing on different aspects of lead generation. And uh, today I wanted to focus on networking you know, net, you know, building networks, building relationships, and actually networking in your community. And, uh, you know, it's pretty much a given fact that the uh, queen of that uh, in our office is absolutely none other than uh, Sapana, uh, yeah. Ms. Sapna Patel. So uh, I graciously have her as my guest today. So come on up, darling. I use the David Jones method. I said Sapana. Come on, join me. No, oh, watch this. It's gonna be great. She came fully prepared, guys. Like, yeah. Because it's too. This thing is too tall for me, you know. And by the way, she brought the stool from home. Like, it's, it's not house, like just Jack from somewhere. Yeah, yeah, she had it already because, like set up. Because this is where I'm at. Okay, this thing is tall. And he's very tall. And now we're the same height. Oh, hold on. Let me get my book. One second. What do you need to get? All right. <laughs> this, you, uh, yes, this, no. this meeting is. This is why y'all need to be here. For those of you who cannot see, this oh, yeah. is what she brought from home. Okay. <laughs> I've had it for like 20 years. Get ready. And you have got to come to the meetings. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Let's get rolling. All right. So, just in case somebody doesn't know Sapna Patel, tell us about yourself. Okay, I'm Sapna. Uh, I grew up in Houston. I went from elementary school all the way to college right here, about 20 miles from where we're standing. I got married. I've got three kids, three beautiful kids. One of them just announced she's taking a job in Wisconsin. It's been a really hard week for me. Um, but yeah, and um, married. Um, live right here in Sugarland. I have lived here for over 25 years. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Yeah. What did you do before real estate? Oh, yeah. So I graduated with an accounting degree. I worked for, uh, at age 20, um, I worked for the big four. And then after that, I went to work for Enron, which I loved. And it was her fault. And Enron went, and yes, no, Enron sorry. went bankrupt, which was, you know, it, I was there a decade. It was very sad because um, I always thought I'd work there forever. And I put all my money into Enron. My bonuses, everything went to Enron stock. I mean, it was a rah, rah, rah thing, right? So you work there. And so um, the funny thing is I was going to quit six months before because I had my baby boy. And my husband's like, no, you should keep working, you know. And then when Enron just fell, um, my 401k fell and I had to start all over. 
my husband too, he worked there. So it was a very rough time for us. And we started all over and I wait, I stayed at the, at Enron for about three years after the bankruptcy because I was in accounting and the area I was in was regulated by FERC. And so I still had a job, but my husband lost his job and I waited till he got a job and then that he was happy with, and then I quit. And then I started my own business and I was a wedding planner for about 18 years before I decided to add real estate for fun. You know, um, it was, it was like, I don't know, my mother-in-law was always saying, oh, I should do real estate. Everybody around me said, I should do real estate or real estate agents would say, refer me customers. So I'm like, let me just try this. So I took the test and um, with a friend of mine, actually, and we were going to do it together. And she quit in Ignite when we took the class together. She said, oh, it was just too much. And um, then uh, the pandemic hit and I was, I had a choice to make. All the weddings got canceled. Um, we were here in Bold, actually, uh, the week after Bold, all my weddings got canceled and I was like, what do I do? And so I did what I normally do. I just kind of hide when something happens, I need to regroup. And, um, and then I think when May 18th is when um, a, a real estate was essential. I said, okay, I can't to be depressed about like all the brides were calling upset because people were losing their money, all the deposits. And I was like, what do I do? So then I said, okay, let me just focus on real estate and see where this goes and kind of fill the gaps. Cause I had a huge warehouse that I had to pay for. And I'm not one of those that asked for help. I didn't go for the, the, the help. I had to take care of one of my employees who's been with me for like 18 years, but I figured out I could. And then I just started doing real estate and um, really focusing on it. Um, but that year, I didn't focus the entire year, um, but now I am, and um, it's been very rewarding. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was a nice, quick summary. Mm -hmm. um, but well, let's, go, <laughs> let's go back to, and I can do that, by the way, guys, and here's why. Let's go back to the wedding time, the wedding planning time. Was there one wedding out of all of the hundreds that you've done that was just so much more amazing than all the rest? You mean where the groom was a groom's own? Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was yours. Also. Oh, it was mine. Okay. <laughs> yeah, married. so for the fact record, she was my wedding planner in 2006, five and six. So that's how yeah. far and, and actually, he was the first, I think, the first of many uh, guys who really was involved, who picked the color of the flowers. And decided I don't know how if I picked the color of the yeah, flowers. I, I think you did. Oh, I, I, I think you did. I, and they had to be a certain number of orchids on each table. Yeah, I remember. Uh -huh. I remember. Right. It was a beautiful wedding, actually. That sounds about right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's get to the matter at hand. All okay. right. So tell me about the importance of networking. Okay. Networking is very important for all aspects of your life, really, not just real estate. Mm -hmm. um, I've just, I've been always a born connector. Uh, networker involved. Um, and the way I really got started was from the very beginning, I always like wherever I'm at to do extra, like to get involved, get to know the people. Um, I can go back to college. I was president of uh, my class. Um, I was in a sorority and I liked that kind of stuff. I like, you know, being a small part of a big picture and being involved in something I really enjoyed. And then you kind of don't get lost anymore because now you have a group set, set of friends or have the same kind of mind as yours, whatever stage in your life you're going through. So I kind of started out like that. And then once I left um, HBU, I was on the alumni board for a while. And then really when I got to Enron is where I discovered how important networking is. Enron was huge, like so many companies. So if you didn't network, you didn't have your next job. Like you didn't know where you were going to be. You couldn't go move forward. Otherwise you get stuck in that same department for 20 years. Like many people I saw sitting around me and I was like, that's not going to be me. So I switched companies, I switch areas. And, and that's why I learned at that time how easy it is to shift gears when things happen is because you stay connected with people always, um, whether it's personal, whether it's about your children, whether it's work, whatever, you know, you're always connected with people and very fast. If you have a huge network of people, you can lift back up quickly. Like you don't have to 
be upset about anything that's happening. You were able to, that's, that's why I think networking is very important. And lots of people, you know, who are introverts do it well also. It's not just extroverts, okay? Um, another reason it's important is because if you're the type of person who likes to get involved in the community you're in, then networking with people will open up more doors for you, right? So anybody who's around me, like when my kid went to first grade, I joined the PTA. Everyone around me, I'm like, let's go, you know, let's join the PTA. So once and every everywhere I went, it wasn't just like, I didn't just sign up to say, I'm going to sign up. I went to every meeting. I'm not the type that skips meetings unless I'm ill or something. I, I took part in something because when you really get involved is when you figure out if you like that organization, you figure out that you like the people you're with. And then in turn, it becomes a, a family, really. You know, like um, I've been involved with Fort Bend ISD since my kid was in kindergarten. So I went from like being a historian to the yearbook person to the president of the PTA. And then after that was over, I started working with the school board. And now I, for the last 10 years, I've been in, on the education foundation. And so it just keeps going. I don't really give up because even though my kids are, I have one more kid left. I don't really, there's no gaps in my, in what I do. Like one of my kids, I have a big age gap, six years between my, second, but you don't have the other two anymore. I do. Oh, you said you have just one so left. So I have one left. Okay. I have lot, for one, the record, for the record, okay. one <laughs> is, one okay. is like independent. One is about to graduate college and the third one. So I had a six year gap, right? Between the, the second and the third, but I didn't leave Clements because I'm like, why? I'm going to be right back. So I didn't leave Clements. I kept, I stayed on the VIPs board and I still kept doing what I needed to do. Um, if there was a problem with anything happening, I wanted to be involved because that's my community. It's part of my life. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's important always. Okay. So you mentioned okay. Fort Bend ISD. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the other things that you're involved in? So I did um, Sugar Law 101, which is everybody should do this class. If you get to learn about all the different things that are happening in Sugar Land. Um, I'm the crime prevention person. I, there's a class, it's like 12 weeks. Um, you can, it's Citizens Police Academy. Mm -hmm. I've done that. I've applied for the federal, you know, FBI Academy. I have not, I've been rejected twice from waiting. Jeez, it's okay. No, I don't care. I will keep applying until I get in, you know, and um, then there's a fire academy. I mean, there's a lot of things you can learn about, right? You, if you just have to choose what you like, for me, it's Sugar Land. Anything to do with Sugar Land, I love. So if they're doing it, I want to know more about it. And that was before real estate. That's already embedded in me. I like, I like knowing about. So that's why real, it kind of came into real estate because if someone asked a lid question or a mud question or a Fort Benny ISD question, I don't have to guess and say, oh, you should check what they, you know, I don't have to guess. I know the answers. So that makes things a little bit easier and, and not having to tell people you should independently check the schools. I'm already ahead of what's happening, what's going to be happening. Sienna's going through big changes because it's fun for me. It, mm -hmm. It's actually fun to be involved in knowing what's going on. So you can serve people better. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You're involved in Telfer HOA too, right? Yes. So mm -hmm. um, I was the board president for five years. And then when I became a realtor, I thought, oh, that might be a conflict. So I kind of resigned from that and then started real estate. And um, and then I kind of gave it a break. And now I'm the delegate again for my neighborhood. So I can be involved, but not making major decisions. But So we do all the activities, you okay. know, like National Night Out, Halloween. We did the Halloween thing. We're about to do Thanksgiving and then Christmas. So I always organize those events. I like organizing events. It's kind of fun bringing people together mm -hmm. and connecting people. And that kind of relates to real estate too, which I never knew I was doing all these real estate activities before. But even people in the neighborhood were like, wait, you're a real estate agent? So I'm still kind of a secret agent because I always was doing those activities. Like when new people moved to the neighborhood would always make sure they're invited and they come, they meet everyone. That was, that was always... That, that's fun. That's networking, you mm -hmm. know, getting to know your neighbors or they know who to call when the pipe burst or this happens, you know? Yeah. 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 Well, that's, that's a work in progress. It's yes. something you're actively working on in 2023, mm -hmm. right? For yes. more promotion, more, more marketing to stay top of mind. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yes, yes. Um, and the other thing, the cool thing about networking is, is that you actually are lead generating when you're networking without even realizing you're lead yes. generating. And that's, yes. the, that's the cool part I love about networking. All right. So 
talking about lead generating, how does the your networking um, show up on the real estate side, show up in your business? Or how, is it, how has it been helping so, your business? Yeah. Um, so when I was in the wedding planning business, I really didn't use my networks to get business. I was always one of those people who said, I don't want my volunteer life and my work life to mix. So I never really, I was a secret wedding planner, you know, like I never wanted to mix those two. That was a, like, even if there was something going on with the PTA, they needed decorations. I would just give the decorations. I never wanted to mix those two, which I guess that was kind of a mistake learning what I've known now in real estate. But I was shocked when I started real estate, I thought it would be all the people I know, my family, you know, that would give me business at the beginning. And, you know, I was at Ignite not too long ago where they tell you make four, four notes, 10 this. Ten, and I was like, oh my God, I cannot do this. Like 10 calls or, daily and I, ten four. yeah, the daily. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I just this cannot, I cannot do this. Like I can't call. When somebody calls me a stranger, I'm like, why are you calling? Like, I don't need insurance, you know, like, so I, I'm also, I always think of that when I'm making the call. So what, luckily, um, like one of my first listings was, um, you know, um, a guy, um, a, a, a guy in Sweetwater, because I knew his daughter through an organization. He was like, my dad in Sweetwater, and I saw his home on the golf course. I said, oh, I'm a realtor. And she's like, yeah, but you're new. You, don't, you haven't done anything. And I said, but just, you know, can you at least set up a meeting with him for me? I was in Ignite. I think it was in Ignite at that time. And she set the meeting up and I was, Tara actually told me, here's what you need. She gave me a listing presentation that she had, but I um, didn't use it. I was very nervous, but I got the listing. And one of my second listings was uh, Port Benicey past board president. She came out of the blue and said, hey, I heard you do real estate. My realtor is retiring. My house is on the market. I said, you want to give it to me? She's like, yeah, I want to give it to you. And I think it's because she always saw me sitting in the audience and doing what I need to be doing for my community and showing up and following through. And, and that is the reason she said she gave me the listing. So a lot of the listings at the, my first six months came from, from this networking, which I never thought, um, you know, I should ask for business there, you know, cause I was always under the mind frame that you shouldn't ask for business. You shouldn't mix your volunteer stuff, volunteer. Cause you want to volunteer because you want to give, but it, it naturally comes and I haven't made a phone call yet. I, I, I have not. And I, I am very bad at it. Making calls to ask for business. I'm not good at it. I'm, mm-hmm. I haven't mastered it yet and I'm not sure that I will. <laughs> <laughs> there's no limiting belief there whatsoever. Yes, there's not a limiting belief. All right. So Let's expand on that a little bit. Now, I know when you first came in and you started getting into production, really good production, you weren't focusing on farming, which is something you've st- started strategizing in. But from just observing you from the outside, I feel like you your farming of Telfair in that area really started growing because of your networking. And it kind of seeped into then all of a sudden just farming into Telfair and, and having a lot of most of the market share there. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so you're right. Um, the first year I was very nervous about farming or even going to my neighborhood because we had on our top 20, I think there was already four people in my neighborhood. I was like, there's already too many people that are very established and known and top 20. And I was like, that's not going to work. I didn't even approach it. Um, No, actually almost a year and a half. Um, And then I realized I was a a limiting belief, you know, that there's 2,800 homes there's room for 25 top agents there. And um, so it was in the pandemic, I started focusing on Telfair. I know Telfair, you know, I know everything about Telfair. Seven mile walk, what lid 17, what they do when they meet. I know all the details about Telfair. And I thought how that that really helped me when people were starting to um, list their homes, all of a sudden without postcards, without anything, people started thinking about me. And I became the number one agent in Telfair in 2021, mm-hmm. which was, it took only a year and four months to make it happen. So anyone can make it happen. It's just, you have to focus there. Like I started focusing on what's going on in Telfair, always watching what's, and then, you know, when people would see my sign, 
they would start saying, I've seen your sign everywhere. They haven't. Maybe there might be two signs. And Telfer is so big. And I'm like, I don't know what they're talking about. But they might see one sign and they think, oh, she's out there, you know. And um, so that does help. And I've always been that. Like from the beginning, people would say, you know, don't just concentrate on Sugarland. You should go everywhere. And I didn't, I don't, I'm not into that. Maybe it's a limiting belief, but yeah. my belief has always been serve here, give here, volunteer here, work here. You know, that's always been my belief. Why drive 30 miles to Woodlands when you can find business right here in your neighborhood and, or Sugarland, you know? So I started concentrating on that. And, and next thing you know, you know, I'd get one listing on the street. And the next thing I get two more on the street. And I, I noticed a pattern. I was like, oh, this works, you know? We put up a listing, people get to know, and then two other people are like, I want you to list it. So, you know, one of my first stories in Telfer was there was a there was a listing appointment I had right when I started. And I went to his house. He called me, he Facebook messengered me. And and I didn't get the listing. I think it was Ida Eunice who got the listing. And then I get then I, I listed this house. It was actually um, on Leamington. And um, when I listed the house. Another guy, two houses down, put a sign up and listed his house. I was like, oh, great. And then there were, the original guy that I had met almost a year ago listed his house for sale by owner. And I was just like, what? Like, I thought his house was already sold. It was listed and everything. And so he, he kept saying, hey, just send the customers here. And I was like, oh, my goodness. Like, so anyway, I, was, I worked six months, a little corner. It was hard. Okay. But I sold that house of mine. And then the guy that listed his house, he approached me and said, that's my friend who's listing it. I've had no action. I want you to take my listing, can you? I'm like, sure. So I took that listing. And then the third guy is like, what's going on, Sefton? Like, I said, do you want me to list your house or what? Because it hasn't sold for so by owner. And I know you're putting up. He did exactly what I did. If I did an open house, he did the open house. <laughs> <laughs> like, he, if I put a sign up, he put a sign right next to me. I said, you know what? I'll find you the buyer, but I want my commission. He goes, well, how are you going to find a buyer? And I said, well, leave it to me, but I want a piece of paper that says I'm going to be paid. So I found him a buyer. And so I sold all three. And that kind of got me some attention, traction. a house that was sitting for almost two and a half years. So I got some traction from that. And then I noticed I go to the next street, same thing would happen. But I, I haven't, I never did the farming part like I should have, like knock on those doors or send a postcard afterwards, because I just... I don't like postcards. I don't like junk mail. So I kind of have those limiting beliefs on things I don't like. And then I just, I don't like it. I like the personal relationships. Like if I know you um, and I like you, I'm going to give you the business. And I, I know that's the same way for the other person giving me the business. So even when somebody asks me a card, I'm not like a card pusher. If you go to, I think the worst thing you can do at a networking event, a social event is go around and pass your card everywhere it's a waste of paper. It's going to end up at the bottom of their thing. Instead, go to the event and make two connections. Go early, go 10 minutes early, because there'll always be the people that are involved in the organization that are there 10 minutes early, make a connection that way instead of passing out cards. Now I don't even print cards. I'm like, I don't want them. You know, it, it doesn't work. Um, leave. And when you talk to them, really listen to them, look them in the eye and Genuinely ask the question and listen to it and then figure out that, hey, this is the person I want to connect with and then put them in your database, you know, and you, most of the time they'll reach out to you. It might not be about real estate, but they'll be about something else mm -hmm. that you talked about. They'll reach out to you if you made a connection. You don't really have to go back and try to make the connection again. Sure. Yeah. Well, I just want to point that out since you made that statement at the end. It's 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 about we we always talk about being local expert of choice, right? Not just real estate. We're there to be the right hand man or the the go to for yes. anything, right? And that kind of sums that up a little bit, right? Like that that so if they're yes. calling about it, it doesn't have to be about real estate. You want to be that resource for that. Person. You have to be the re and you have to like you have to get to know your neighborhood, like the details of your neighborhood, like. A splash pad. How do you turn that splash pad on? You know how many times I've gotten a question on that? How do you turn the splash pad on? So I got a call, I think it was 2000, yeah, last year. Somebody called me and asked me, how do you turn it on? My son's having a birthday party. And I said, oh, I can come show you. He goes, no, you can give me the instructions. I'll know. I said, okay. Then he says, oh, I see you're doing real estate. How's the market? 
well, ended up being a $1.4 million listing. And so he just, he didn't want to sell. He was like, if I get this much, I'll sell my house. I said, I think you can get this much. Let's list it. And so you just never know where that next listing is going to come from or the buyer is going to come from. You just have to stay engaged with people constantly and doing it through something you love. For me, it's children. Most of my, everything I do has to do with children and sugar land. And um, the latest thing that I've added to my list, which is probably going to slow down some real estate, which is okay. But um, I got appointed to the planning and zoning board yes. with Sugarland, which is, it's, it's an honor. I, I'm excited about it. I'm going to get to learn a lot. And it's for Sugarland, which is kind of in my circle of things I want to do. Yeah. Awesome. And you need to learn how to turn on a splash pad. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, just, I'm just saying, it's just a minor thing, but it's little things in your neighborhood because it is difficult, you know, for technology challenge people mm -hmm. how to do things like that it's difficult for me i remember when i tried to do it the first time with a little thing you have to step on like three times wait for the light like i would have never thought of that i would thought things are switch or something <laughs> you know Funny. yeah all right so the direction that the market is now in and continues to be in why do you feel like networking and building a network like that is super important to grow your real estate business Oh, it's always important, but during this time, we're gonna have more time on our hands, right? We're not gonna be, like people are not gonna be knocking on our doors to list their home just yet. But, so you should find something you love and you should sign up for it because you're gonna have time for it. And why it's important? Because you never wanna lose focus on what you're doing and why you're doing, because when the work starts slowing down, we start, thinking, oh my goodness, I'm not doing what I need to be doing. Oh, I didn't do that today. Oh, there's nobody calling me. You know, that kind of stuff happens. Oh, I sent out so many postcards, no one's called me. But if you're busy doing things for other people, like a charity you love, you know, things just come without you really manifesting it. Like it just comes because you're busy doing things for other people. And anytime I have a break, you'll never see me having a break. I'm always doing something like from morning to night. Like last night, I, yeah, I don't. Let's not talk about that. Yeah, no, what? Okay, I'm gonna talk about last night. <laughs> but look, what I'm saying is, I don't really say no unless it's really gonna hinder my schedule, because, because it it is fun. Life is fun, and work is fun. And if you combine the fun and the family and everything, it just becomes easy. It's not like a task, you know. And to always stay positive, even you know, like sometimes and even in in things you are volunteering, people start thinking you work there. You know, like sometimes that happens because you do so much and, and just stay positive and just keep doing what you're doing. And even when you're not busy, all of a sudden you will be busy because somebody will notice that you're working hard and they want you on their team to sell their house. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Enough about self now. Okay. Let's talk about them now. Okay. 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 All right. So if someone wants to start building a solid networking business, whether they're new to the city or brand new in real estate, or just that wasn't their niche, what's your first piece of advice? Um, my, oh, that's hard. Okay. Because if you're new to the business and you want to start networking, of course, you know, the networking among the KW agents already happens here. They provide a, a lot of events for you to do. And that's part of networking also to getting to know other real estate agents and what they're going through. And that's also important, but I would start in your neighborhood, you know, and some people will say, Oh, I don't think not, not that much is happening in my neighborhood, but you know, even if you have a small neighborhood, you can go look to see how many sales there were last year and start doing stuff in your neighborhood, get in, call the HOA, find out what activities they're having, you know, have activities of your own on your own, on, on your block. You know, you don't have to wait for HOA to organize something, organize a garage sale, um, get involved in your neighborhood because your neighborhood is the first place you should know a lot about. And even if the price point is 200, it doesn't matter if it's a million and you've never done a million, it doesn't matter. Get involved in the neighborhood, get to know the neighborhood, know everything about the neighborhood. Who's your, um, patrol officer? Who is, who's your lid president? Who's your mud president? Who are, what are their email addresses? Where do they go to network? Where do they show up? Um, who's your HOA president? Who's the social coordinator? 
find out who these people are because once you find out who they are and you get to know them, you can know, you can get to find out more activities that are going on because you know, you're not like, if you have an event in your neighborhood, you're not going to be able to bring as many people as someone who's already like an authority, like an HOA, they're going to be bringing a ton of people to the event because they can advertise to them. They know everybody's email addresses. So, but know your neighborhood. There is not, there's not a single fact about the neighborhood that, that you should not, it should not be your business because once you start getting the clients, you're going to need to know information to serve them. Right. Um, and make it about something, you know, that you like, like if you see somebody doing a foodie group and you know, you don't need to be eating that much, then no, you can't be leading this, you know, like that's not, but find something like, um, a bike, bike ride on a Saturday. Cause we have a seven mile lake that happens in my neighborhood, but I don't bike. So I don't do that, but find something that you like and really get it. And if you don't have a neighborhood, find one. If you live in an apartment, find one next to you or or in the apartment, because most of those apartment people want a house in one day. It might happen six months, it could happen a year or two years, because you're building a long-term business, right? It's not about what just happens this quarter or next quarter or this year, you're building a reputation. Networking directly relates to reputation. So if, you, if you're a new agent and you want someone to give you a business, you've got to show some form of commitment that you had to the neighborhood, which is not a paid job. You know, it, it, it should be just a giving job. And then eventually with your knowledge, you being seen, also being seen is a lot about networking, uh, making sure that it's very visible. A, a networking, a good networker is very visible in the community. So that's important too. Um, Okay. okay. So you named a, you named a couple of things there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this then mm -hmm. should, when you're starting out or you want to build this robust network, should you focus on a certain number of networking opportunities or should you invo be involved in as many as you can? Um, I mean, if you start doing many as you can at the beginning, you're not going to have time for real estate, right? So you need to probably pick three and then eliminate if you don't like something, but if you pick something, and something you enjoy, you're going to love it. You know, and you're going to meet a lot of new people. And by the way, even though I network and I've always been a networker, I still get nervous with new groups. You know, I still would be like the one in the corner going, okay, should I go up and talk to them? I, I still do that. I kind of wait for people to come talk to me or say hello. It, it would take That's a friend right. with you, That's you know, right. mm -hmm. take a friend with you. Like if you're uncomfortable, take another real estate agent with you. Like chamber has free network nights. I've never seen anybody there. Nobody from this or I start taking uh, Greg, but take someone with you. And um, because it makes it more fun. It's, it's a little bit easy, but go to something every month that you've never been to. And you know, the more you do that, it'll become easier. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. Mm -hmm. Now that you mentioned Greg, how would you bring marketing into your oh. networking? So, okay, that's very good. Um, so Greg provides um, marketing services to the office. So you can contact him and say, hey, I want to farm my neighborhood. So you should have a ready list of the, your farming, okay? And then he, you can have an idea and he'll kind of put it on paper for you. Okay. And if you like it, you can do postcards. Um, you can do them once a quarter, once a month, you know, whatever you want to do. You can do postcards, you can do flyers, you can do door hangers, but you have to, so I've never done any, this is my first time I'm going to be attempting at all this. I just started. So the postcard idea I had for about, I mean, the brochure I had probably about a year, I've been trying to do it. And um, so finally it's come okay. to life and, um, and Greg, Greg, Greg helped me with that. Um, you know, I kind of know what I want. I'm pretty like, Greg was very patient. Like I wanted a certain way, you know, but we got it done together. We found a really good printer, um, you know, the one right here locally. And so this weekend I did a, I've never done this. They had an event in Telfair um, and I did a booth because they kept asking me, can you donate? Can you donate? And I'm like, I don't really want to do a booth, but I did the booth. And I'm like, okay, I'll do the booth. So I use my brochures and I had the brochures laid out. I had a tablecloth and my book. Okay. And I had a lot of people coming to me and saying things like, hi, Sapna, I don't know them, I'm not sure. 
So I came up with a page and I wrote everybody's name down. I said, hey, can you give me your name? Can you, can you write your name down? Can you tell me what street you live on? And so the day after I wrote every one of them hand note. I enjoyed meeting, it wasn't that many people. I think it was like 15 people. I enjoyed meeting you in person and my best, and this is why I, I it's like a sign that I need to keep doing what I'm doing and get, not get distracted with all the things everyone tells me to do in real estate because there was a guy that was like lurking, standing there and he kept, you know, wanting to talk to me. So then I finally, I said, hey, I need to talk to this guy. And he goes, hi, Sapna. And I'm like, hi. I didn't know him. I didn't know who he was. And I said, oh, can you, do we know each other? He goes, oh, I know you. Remember one time? And I said, what, what? I don't remember. And he's like, on this Telfer Avenue, I was, um, I guess he was walking. There was this, he almost fell. Okay. And so I kind of just pulled over and that's my natural habit. Like, what's wrong? Are you okay? He's like, oh, this thing I've been fighting, the, the street is like, you know, popping and, and he lives right there. I said, okay, you know what? Let me take a picture of this and we'll get this taken care of. And so he saw in two days what he had been trying to do for a year, get someone to fix it. I got it done. You know, he goes, how did you do that? I was so impressed. And he goes, I'm starting a new business. He's opening a pet supply store in Telfair. Can you help me with a grand opening? Absolutely, I will help you. And so you have to be that person that people can go to and they know you're going to help them. You need to help them, connect them. So I connected them with the chamber, right? Because they're gonna do the ribbing cutting. I know exactly where to go. So those type of things are, it's, it's always, and if he ever sells his house, he's going to remember me. He, I didn't even introduce myself that day. I cannot believe I did not. I just took a picture and I said, I'll get it taken care of, don't worry, you know? And I'm thinking, why didn't I? He remembered me. He looked me up. He um, found out I had, I go to, I went to college with his cousin, which I did not, but everybody thinks I did. I, I know the cousin. And so it's like, okay, I should have been better, like of writing down that day. Hey, what's your name? And follow up. But I'm not good at them. I'm always like fast. Like I need, I'm always like ADD. We're probably, I have borderline ADD, <laughs> probably, you know? Yeah. self diagnosed so, the middle of team meeting. Yeah. How awesome. Probably. Yeah. But All so right. networking is important. It is. All right. So now that you've mentioned how important it is over the last 30, 45 minutes, sum up. That wasn't a joke, guys. Sum up. <laughs> sum up. Sum up. Sum All up. right. Sum it up into three easy, easy steps if somebody wants to start now. Okay. So if you're going to do it in the business, um, one of the things that you should do is definitely network with someone here who's networking and ask them if they will take you along, okay? Because that's probably the easiest. So I can't say I did everything on my own. Like when I um, became um, school, Fort Bend ISD Foundation Board, I um, somebody took me along. She said, hey, Sapna, I, we need to take a chair. Can you help us? Can you?" And I said, oh, what do I need to do? And I think I was a little hesitant because I had just gotten out of PTA president role, but some, ask someone to take you along. If you're interested in something, ask them, can you get me involved? Can you get me a seat? Because that's the best. That's the easiest, fastest track. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you don't know anybody that's involved in the organization, just then just call up the person, call up the president, call up the social chair and said, I would like to be involved with your organization. What, where can I go? What should I do? Get on their Facebook group, follow them on Facebook, right? Uh, and see what they're doing and show up at an event. But you have to do it like it needs to be just like real estate. It has to be. You need to write it down. Okay. Where, what do I want to do? Where do I want to go? And you need to make a conscious effort to be involved in something. And then once you are involved, you need to go to the meetings. You can't be one of those people who just shows up once in a while. It's like a job. All in. You have to be all in, you know, because otherwise, what's the purpose? You know, sign up for a bunch of things and not really do it. What's yeah. the purpose? It's awesome. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the other thing I'm hearing out of this big is, um, is you have to be extremely proactive. Proactive. And just, just help others, whatever it is. I mean, sometimes people will ask you questions. You're just like, how does this person not know this answer? You know, sometimes it will happen. Now, you know, don't do some of the things I do. I get so passionate about what I do. I get kind of crazy sometimes. Like, you know, when I took the Citizens Police Academy course, like you learn so much about so many things you're like, you never knew, you know? And then you also get to drive the patrol car. 
like an, it's an, so you get to drive it like and only look at houses that people on vacation you know that you don't get to get tickets or anything but stuff like that so it's fun but some i remember like i am the like i am the neighborhood watch like if something is there suspicious somebody will call me and say seven there's a car and da, 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 da. i said okay let's call 311 <laughs> and like you know well one time i got i got so irritated there was this car and i just started real estate there was a car like facing weird like on the wrong side of the street and i walked up to him and i said hey excuse me what are you doing he's like what do you mean? I'm just waiting for my realtor to show me that house. But it was like across the lake all the way there. And I said, oh, okay, well, um, wouldn't you be waiting for the house? Why are you waiting for me? He goes, who are you? The neighborhood police? I said, yeah, I am. Uh, so then I noticed all this stuff in his car and, and then he was like really getting irritated. And then he left, you know, he ran. So I chased him and you know because I'm like this person is a bad person so yeah and then I called you know and they're like you shouldn't be chasing and I took the license plate but he was the guy who stands there and takes the garage scanners right and so then he can get into the garages later and that's when we were having a lot of robberies in Telford and so yeah don't go don't get that crazy but I know better now but sometimes you just get so into it you're just like Okay, I want to figure out who that person was. But yeah, but I, I got the license plate, so that was good. good. But yeah, but get involved in your neighborhood. I mean, if you're sitting, if you're making 20 calls a day, which Bold is telling us to do, you can get involved in something that's going to be more meaningful than calling 20 strangers who probably got another 20 calls from other people at Keller Williams, like the seven o'clock phone calls that people make on an expired listing. I learned that really well. Like if you take the house off the market, 25 agents from Keller Williams will be calling at seven o'clock in the morning. It's so you have to, it, it, you have to do something different. You can't do what everybody else is doing because they're already doing it. And if it's working for them, that's great, but you need to find something that works for you. Mm -hmm. This works for me. And this has just been my lifelong thing. I've always been involved wherever I go. I want to leave it better than I found it. And so I get involved and I get, and I don't, that the only thing is I don't sometimes give up anything. So it just keeps adding to the list. But now I've come to an age where I need to start giving up some stuff and, and, and yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you. Any final thoughts? Any last piece? Last sentence? Um, no. I mean, you know, just, you know, just remember that um, networking. It will expand your customer base quickly. You know, it'll um, keep you on top of mind the people <clears throat> that you're involved with. So everyone's always selling the house sometime, right? Um, and they that always need a place to live. They always need a place to live, and it'll increase your visibility in the community, whichever one you decide to be in. Um, it will change your reputation, or you'll get a reputation. You know, let's just say that, and. Um, and then you become a connector, you know? I, I call myself a connector. Like if someone has an issue, I know where to connect them. And I think that's a really important skill to have in real estate because after, you, after the, you're a realtor, they still call you, right? And they still have questions. And the biggest question they always have is, tell me about the neighborhood. Who should I know in the neighborhood? Everyone wants to feel like as, as they move into the neighborhood, sometimes it takes them a year to get out because they're still moving in. But you can be the first one to connect them to people, connect them to their neighbors. Um, Riverstone, um, I started working in Riverstone and I went to, I got lucky. I, my first listing was on a street where everybody's tied, everything's on WhatsApp. You have to notice that some, some people are really into talking to each other in some neighborhoods and some neighborhoods, they never connect. And so right now, like if I get a listing days before the listing, I can find a buyer. And if I am a buy, if I if I am a buyer's agent, and I know what they want, I can go get a listing for them that's not listed, because of connections. And I have one happening right now. I had called an expired listing in April, and he's like, "Oh my goodness, I'm getting all these people calling me today." I said, "It just changed, you know, on MLS this morning, and I noticed you're in my neighborhood, so I called you, you know." And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, we're not interested in selling, and then we're out of the country right now." So I said, oh, can I call you when you get back from the, out of the country? He's like, sure. So I called him, he did invite me over and um, 
but they weren't really interested in listing because in the high in the 2021 they listed their home it was very nice and didn't sell so they were like you know we're not going to get the kind of price so um but let us talk about it next march which is coming up in march and um and i said okay sure and then um but of course there's always in the back of my mind this house is there it's going to come one day so through my networking somebody gave this man my phone number said hey you're having a hard time finding a house call Sapna. and he called me and i go oh, how'd you get my number and he's he listed a couple of people who'd said i can help him he had been looking at a house for three years and um i said oh well you're i mean his list was not that difficult so i said okay you know actually i know somebody who's going to sell let me talk to them so i went and talked to them and i said hey i think i might have a potential buyer's perfect match because i'm good at matchmaking i was when i was a wedding planner and i am now like i listen to what they say and i really ask a lot of questions to find out exactly what they're looking for so i called him up and he goes oh seven we're not ready I said, what if I got you, you know, 40,000 above what you had listed it for? He goes, oh, but the market slowed down, the interest rates are high. And then he comes back and asks for 100,000 more. You know, he goes, if you can get this, then we'll do it. I'm like, I don't think this is realistic, but okay, let's try. So I called the guy and he came, I showed him the house. I said, can we show the house? I said, yeah. He goes, I said, can you leave the key under the door? He's like, yes, I can. So they left. I showed him the house. He loved it, you know? But then he's like, oh, I'm not paying this much. This is too much. It was just listed like seven months ago for this much. And I said, okay, well, let's, uh, let me talk to him. So I went back and forth with the comms. And I told him what price this house is worth, even in, you know, even though the market is, he can still get good money. But if he sits on and waits till March, I have no idea. So anyway, we made the match make happen as a cash deal. So it's gonna close. And, awesome. Yeah, and then he the seller came back and said, "I want you know forty five days to move out," and the buyer said, "That's fine." And so yeah, it's um, it, it was good. It, that was because of Networking. you know networking and, and well, I've never called an expired, so that was I like calling expires in my neighborhood, but it's kind of hard to mm -hmm. to call when you don't really know much about what's going on. So if you know more, like even if new territory, right? If you know a lot about new territory, you can call an expired and and you can get the answers from them. Good deal. You know? Yeah. Thank you. One and only, Sapna Patel. All right, let's wrap it up, guys. All right, let's get our, uh, let's get our friends up here. Yes. I won't even say my spiel. I had a whole thing today. Okay. <laughs> So let's see if you guys pay attention to Melissa Lima, Pat and Title downstairs. Let's see if you guys pay attention to me. I have a really cool Astros poncho. I have some dome foam and some copper box, some cool stuff. What fun fact did I say about the World Series? Who determines home field advantage at the World Series? Yeah, it used to not anymore, by the way. I didn't correct you the other day. Okay, then what is it? You get a, you get a Morris, what is what is the second? What were you gonna say? Well, Rita has the most wins. Yep, team that has the most wins. And it's funny because after I did that, my back I realized that it was no longer like that. But that's what I said. That is what you said, though. I'm gonna get you something. <laughs> okay. Bye. Come on, Yu Yi. Come on up. <laughs> Hello, I'm Yu Yi. I'm working for Red Lion. I'm going to send out you guys a template to make it easy. Basically, just ask for customer name, phone number, address, and, and email, okay? And then you can forward this to the customer when you forward that and CC me, then I will give them the price. If you can give me the address, that will be good because I can base on the edges, different edges, sometimes it's a different power line company, so it's different price, okay? And then I can Google their home, how big is that? That way I can give the appropriate plan to fit their size, okay? And that will be easy because last week I have an agent refer a customer, but the customer only contact me after he signed up from Red Lion. The one thing he signed up for higher price, other thing is he doesn't get the direct uh, customer service like me. I can text them and look up their account. It's much more easy. And the worst thing is it cut you out from the 
withdrawal fee because if they don't sign up for me, you don't get the withdrawal fee, okay? And yeah. Awesome. All right. Connect with UE. You'll get your clients will get personal concierge service. They'll get a discount and you will get a referral, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good deal. You. Thank you. <laughs> sum it up, right? <laughs> yeah. Sum it up. What's hey, all. On? Catherine, I'm Cap. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard feds are raising rates this week. Please, please, please. If your buyer is on, on the edge, get to your loan officer before you write that contract. They can go from being qualified to not being qualified just with the increase in interest rate. Reach out to us, we're here for you. If you have any questions, there's me, Dale, Daniel, and Denise. Thank you, Catherine. Yep, Thank be you. mindful of those pre-approvals. Might need to generate another one. All right, our friends at David Weekly. Okay. Come on up, Scott and Chris. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, CJ, how are you? Sponsors. I'm Scott Trollio with David Weekly Homes. My Scott, this way Chris a little Scott. bit more so they can see you online. Here okay. Yep. Scott Trollio with David Weekly Homes, my partner, Chris Kahn. I'm going to keep it short and sweet. If you don't have one of these, please get it. It's a revenue generating sheet for you. Okay. Models up to 450, ready to close by the end of December except for one of them. We have a three car garage on one of the models, three bedrooms, four bedrooms, uh, great specials. Uh, as I said, these will be uh, what's in it for you is a product, quality product for you, your customer, and uh, we're ready to, uh, to move. We have some exciting news that we are generating and uh, have created a new development. I'm gonna let Chris speak more to that, but uh, please make sure you get one of these sheets and if you have any questions, of course, please give us a call. We'd be happy to help you, your customers, in any way, shape, or form. All right. So I want to thank you all, first of all, for letting us come back out here today. I've been out to this office a couple of times over the last few years, and I've actually worked with a couple of agents in the room. Uh, a lot of people right now in this market are asking, where's the stuff in the 300s? And we listen to our customers. We listen to our realtor partners. David Weekly Homes is launching a new development called The Cottages in Siena Oaks. Uh, if anyone has not come out and looked at our current development, I would definitely encourage all to do so. I'm going to leave some of my cards here as well. Our information is on the flyer. Uh, we have stuff coming to market in the low 300s. It's a really good product. If you have an entry-level buyer or a first-time buyer who's looking for that home that hits the right price point, hits the right size, we definitely have something for them. If you have that client that says, hey, the kids moved out of the house, now we need something that we don't have to maintain as much, we also have those products. And um, overall, we're definitely excited to be here. And if y'all have any questions, come see us. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. Thanks. Appreciate it, Scott. All right. Um, Melanie's got a question. Yes. Yep. They're going to be the same uh, development that we have with the 35 and the 40 foot products. Uh, but I always tell people the cap deal, the cap deal we're going to find say they want larger and they're pretty surprised by how big our homes are. So 1,400 to about 2,600 square feet. 1,400 to 2,600 square feet. Yeah. Good deal. All right. Thank you guys right. for lunch. We appreciate it. No All right. Those of y'all here, enjoy your day, enjoy your lunch. And for you online, appreciate y'all joining us. Apologies for going a little over. Enjoy your day. Make it a good one.